Hi Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready Today. Well, I'm doing a review of this guy. This is the Protec Malibu in the uh, Warren, Cliff, uh, Warren Cliff blade shape. Now, I gotta be honest here. Now, if you ask me, you know, Mr. EDC Ready, if you could design a pocket knife, how would you design it? You get this guy. This is like, this is the closest thing to a perfect knife as it is in my mind. Is if I were to design a knife, like it would come out looking almost exactly like this. With that being said, uh, there are uh, two and a half things I can complain about and that is something that is very uh, petty and very like sub subjective as all reviews are subjective. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna gush out right now that this is my favorite knife design ever. So without further ado, let's start with some dimensions. Okay, this guy is coming in at a, a blade length of about uh, 83 and a half, sorry, 83.5 millimeters or 3.29 inches on my calipers. We have here a blade thickness of a very thin, of a very thin 0 0.12, 0 0.13 inches right around there. Uh, we have here a blade, oh god, so good. We have here a blade, uh, handle thickness of about uh, just under half an inch and then a handle length of, all right, handle length of uh, 4.2 inches. So just fantastic. Dimensions, let's talk about another dimension. This is the weight dimension. This guy here is coming in at uh, let's see now, it is going to be in grams, so I'll do the conversions. Uh, it is coming in at about 88 grams, which is, or 88, 89 grams, which is around 3.1 ounces, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, do check the, uh, the Google for that conversion rate. And yeah, this guy is coming out of an American company called Protec. Protec is known for making a lot of automatics. This is not an automatic, this is a manual knife, because when you press this, the blade doesn't fire out. The blade can swing out, but it doesn't fire out. Uh, let's see now, what else can I talk to you about this? It is made in America and it is in 20 CV sealed. So let's get into the full review of this guy, starting from tip to butt. First off, let's talk about this blade. <clears throat> this blade is just an amazing blade shape. It starts off quite thin and you have a relatively high flat grind, but the grind is really good to the point that it gets to a very keen edge. This is a super sharp knife coming out of the box and I really, really appreciate that. Another thing I really love about this is the blade shape. The shape of this blade is one of my favorite shapes. In fact, I would say that this is my favorite kind of blade shape. They call it a worn cliff, but it's not a full worn cliff because worn cliffs are completely flat. This is kind of like a modified sheep's foot with a pointy tip kind of situation. Compare this to your regular drop point. Here is a ZTO 450CF. Uh, this guy kind of has a bigger belly a deeper belly and kind of curves up a little bit. This guy has a very shallow belly, a lot flat, very shallow belly, and then you get the tip. Why I love this blade shape is that my preferal, my, my preference when it comes to cutting is I do a lot of poking cuts, piercing cuts, and I do a lot of pulling cuts. And when you have these kind of straighter, very shallow belly blade shapes, this is gonna be perfect for those kind of pull cuts. Just do my favorite blade shape out there, hands down. And it comes to a very sharp and keen edge. You do not have any billboarding on the blade, which is very nice, which is very clean. On a lot of blades, you can get the ZT here, the ZT0450 on the blade itself. And on the back, you have a whole bunch of other numbers. Uh, 0450CF, Kai USA, Sinkovich, S35VN, uh, serial number 24942. This guy, the only branding you see here is at the top, Protec. You can see right there. And it's quite faint. I thought this would be etched a little bit deeper, but it comes up quite faint. You can still see Protect there. And as for the steel labeling, you can kind of see it here. Yep, 20 CV, very, very nice. Well done, uh, steel labeling. The steel itself is very good. 20 CV is uh, one of the best steels out there right now. Uh, it is right up there, the upper echelons of um, M390, of uh, C, uh, what, um, CTS204P. You know, a CPM uh, 20 CV is just such a great blade steel. It is very corrosion resistant. Uh, it has uh, the ability to hold an edge for a really long time. And it's just fantastic. Now, is it my favorite blade steel? No, my favorite blade steel is uh, LC200N or uh, Vanek steel because they are effectively corrosion proof. Whilst 20 CV M390 CTS204P are uh, very highly corrosion resistant, but I wouldn't say they are corrosion proof but it's still good enough for any everyday carry situation out there. 
fantastic. One thing I do wish, and here comes uh, one of the very few complaints I have about this knife, which is uh, I have two and a half complaints. First of which is that I wish there was a little bit of jimping up here. I actually wish the protect the the protect etching was actually a little bit deeper, so I would actually have a little bit more grip on the top of the blade. Top of the blade here is actually uh, quite smooth, uh, which is nice on the hands, but sometimes you just want a little bit more grip where your thumb rests. The finish on the blade itself is in uh, stone wash. So what's great about that is you, it actually cuts down all these sharp edges on the side. Sometimes when you have a satin, a satin grind like this guy, sometimes the edges can be a little bit on the sharper side. This is not actually a good example. Do I have any examples here? The Spider Co's kind of have that feature. Because of the satin, uh, uh, because of the satin finish, you do you do get a little bit of a sharp edge up here. It's not gonna cut you, but it's not like comfortable. But with the stone wash, you get this nice rounded corners up at the top here. So that's very very nice. The jimping also, I love the jimping. This is my favorite uh, flipper tap now. That my favorite my favorite flipper tap used to be the ZT flipper tap, but now it has been taken over by this guy. Just great. You have this nice jimping, and then all the edges are rounded, so you don't you know, like it's not pointy. It's not gonna dig into your hands on the side, but you still get a lot of purchase for that flipping action Which we will get to believe you me because that flipping action is just great Moving back a little bit uh, We have an aluminium um, Handle now aluminium handle is something I'm not accustomed to I'm accustomed to carbon fiber uh, titanium steel uh, FRN is one of my favorites out there. This is the first time I'm using a an aluminium handle and a lot of people are kind of like looking down on that a little bit. I don't know why. Like if you're doing something that can damage an aluminium handle or bend it or break it, you're kind of using the wrong knife. You know, this is gonna be absolutely fine for everyday carry. Now the advantage about aluminium is that it's also very corrosion resistant. Uh, it's not like super corrosion proof like titanium, uh, but it's still really corrosion uh, resistant. Couple that with this uh, coating that I have here, it's going to be great for you know, putting it in and out of your pocket, it's gonna not dig into your pockets. Uh, it's not gonna dig into your hands. It's not gonna be rough. Now I gotta say this: the texturing here kind of feels like the texturing you find on vibrators. Now I, I don't know if you've owned any vibrators, but uh, if you have ever bought those vibrators with kind of that silicone kind of feel on the outside, that's what it feels like uh, on these uh, black handles. Okay, Nick Chavez calls it a block, a black chalky aluminum handles and I can feel that it does kind of feel chalky it does kind of feel smooth but it feels very comfortable in the hand so that's very very nice however one thing about this handle is that here comes my second complaint is that uh, it is a little bit slippery there has been a time when I flipped this guy out and then because of this texture it just kind of like slipped out of my hand bounced off the table and uh, this tip went straight into my bare thigh because I was flipping this without pants on but that's another story uh, I was having a little intimate moment with my Protec Malibu. But yeah, so uh, lack of jimping here, that's the first complaint. I would have liked that. And then uh, a little bit more texturing. I guess if you could have had a little bit more jimping or texturing in the back here. You do have some jimping in the back here, but you can't really use it. You can't really feel it. It doesn't really add anything because it is kind of like recessed in. If the jimping here stood out or poked out a little bit, then I then that would have actually had a, a nicer effect. But because it's kind of recessed, it's kind of pointless having that jimping there. So that's kind of like my only two gripes, which is no jimping on here and the, 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 the handle needs a little bit more texturing. Next up, let's talk about, I gotta say my favorite thing about this knife, which is the action. Uh, button locks are great. Button locks on bearings are even better. I mean, just like, this knife just drop shuts like nothing I've ever felt before. I mean, you just, you just apply pressure, 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 and then it just pops off of that uh, detent, and then it just fires out, and then it locks in nice and tight, no blade play, and then you just press this button, and then it will completely disengage, and it is completely free swinging. This is better than the compression lock, it is better than the axis lock, it is, it is just amazing. I love this action. This action with the button lock is fantastic. I love Love this action. Now the button lock itself, when it comes to pocket knives, I'm a lock guy. Uh, I like having different kinds of locks. Uh, I'm very interested in the shark lock. I want to try that. And button locks are just amazing because once you pass that detent, okay, uh, and then there is pretty much very little or zero lateral pressure being placed onto the blade. And then with the bearings, once you disengage the lock, 
it will completely uh, swing uh, because there's no like lateral pressure. All it has is those bearings on the side. Compared to something like a frame lock, once you disengage the lock, okay, you're still gonna get the pressure of the frame lock on the blade. So it doesn't exactly have a fall shut action. You can definitely sh uh, shake it shut. It's not gonna swing shut, unlike this guy. Yeah, just like that. And, that, and it works better than compression lock, uh, uh, than a compression lock, than an axis lock. Just, it's just my favorite locking mechanism uh, right now. Now, another thing I do want to complain about is the, the screws are kind of weird. Okay, so you have nice screws in the sense that these screws are deep, okay? You have hex here. Uh, I believe it is a 1.5 hex bit. It's nice and deep here. It's nice and deep here. But over here is using a T6 screw and I don't really understand why they went with the T6 screw. I don't understand why they can't just have a similar screw like this on this side for the stop pin. So that's kind of a weird thing. And you know what? The thing about T6 screws is that it can go in here, it can go in here, and it can go in all of here. So I don't know why um, this... Uh, you can technically take this part with just one screw, that T6, but T6 screws kind of strip out quite easily. I'm not actually a big fan of T6 screws on hardware, which is why I really like... Uh, this guy and this guy. So these two guys, uh, you can take them apart with T8 screws. This guy absolutely with just T8 screws. And then this guy, uh, once I remove the screws on the inside, you can just take it apart with one T8 here, one T8 here, and everything goes out. Here you gotta use those hex bits on the sides here. And then T6 or T6 all the way around. So that's, I just find that kind of weird. Uh, can't, I don't understand why they can't just use the hex, the same size hex bit for all of the screws or uh, have screws that fit T8s that go all the way around. Yeah, so that's kind of weird. But other than that, the construction of this guy is A-OK. -okay. This opens like half and half. This backspacer is actually integrated into the handle along the lanyard hole, which is very nice. So you just unscrew these and then uh, everything just pops up. You do need to keep in mind the button lock is under spring, ten uh, spring tension, so you don't want that to pop out and then kind of like fly across the room. So you just gotta make sure that is fine and then uh, there you go. The button lock itself is actually a very simple design. The only part of, the only mechanism of the lock is just a little bar that moves back and forth. So it only has two moving parts and then the entire mechanism is just captured in this one small area compared to let's say a liner lock where the locking mechanism takes pretty much more than half of this whole scale and a back lock pretty much takes half of the back portion of the knife. This guy locking mechanism, very small area of the knife, even smaller than a Benchmade access lock. So that's very, very nice. But that action, that action, once you disengage it, it is just drop shutty. And this is the most fidgety knife there is. Coupled with the fact that a button lock just means that it's 95% ambidextrous because I can disengage it like that, or I can disengage it like that with a thumb or with the index finger and it's just 95, maybe 96% ambidextrous. Pocket clip, Protect does pocket clips really well. I've heard my first Protec, I can absolutely see that. They are doing everything right when it comes to the pocket clip. It's a deep carry pocket clip, that's one, very nice. The screws are recessed into the pocket clip, that's nice. The pocket clip is recessed into the handle, that's very nice. You have uh, a nice swoop down, and then once it swoops, swoops up, it flattens out and that's very nice because sometimes you get these kind of uh, pocket clips where you just go down and then they kind of go back up and then this can kind of be a hot spot when once uh, especially when you grip it really hard or when you want to pull it up to put it into your pants but with this guy with that flat portion you can kind of just go in and then you can lift it up no problem not painful and then in the hand no hot spot from that little flat portion right there although do keep in mind uh, I like to do this to put knives into my pocket so it doesn't tear out the top of my pocket. You do tend to leave a little nail residue uh, on the bottom of, uh, on, on the handles right there. So you really bear down on it. You can kind of see a little bit white there. That is my nail coming up. But that's very nice. Keep your nails sharp. Keep your nails uh, short as well as I fail to do that many, many times. All right, so in conclusion, uh, great blade steel, okay, CPM 20 CV, great blade shape great uh, labeling on the on the blade amazing amazing action and locking mechanism just love that fantastic flipper tap a uh, nice handle very small in the pocket i forgot to mention once you put this in the pocket top part of your pocket is just that wide and it's very tiny 
uh, that is the only thing that compares to is even bigger. Sorry, it's even smaller than the uh, Quiet Carry Waypoint, which is already a small knife already. So it carries very small in the pocket, and it carries deep carry in the pocket as well. Fantastic to carry, uh, comfortable in hand. You have all these nice chamfered edges on the edges here, and then it's chamfered, and then the corners are rounded off, so you don't really get any hot spots at all. My only complaint is that it's a little bit slippery because there's no jipping here, there's very little texturing here even though it is comfortable in hand and once you have it in hand, all these finger grooves actually hold it quite well but it's just that the feeling of the knife, the feeling of the texturing it feels a little bit slippery so I wish they would have had a little bit more jimping up here and maybe have this little back spacer jimping right here uh, move up a little bit instead of having it re recessed and then kind of weird hardware like Hex is fine, T6, I can live with it, but to have Hex and T6 is kind of weird. And an amazing pocket clip and an amazing carry. And without a doubt, you know, this is one of the best, if not, in my opinion, the best pocket knives out there. I, I cannot foresee me improving on this knife. Like, uh, like in the market, like I can't foresee buying another knife that is better than this knife, you know. You might want different things, you might want like something super B3 like uh, uh, Demco AD 20.5 or a cold steel, you might want something that's completely rust proof like this guy, like this guy. You might want something that's a little bit cheaper because this is expensive. I got this at about 210 USD. You want, might want something that's a little bit cheaper so you can beat around like this guy but in terms of its design, in terms of its material, with what's available in the market right now, I do not foresee anything being better than this. And that is the end of the review, that is the conclusion of the review. Thanks guys, uh, hope you guys enjoyed me like gushing over this knife, I really love it. If you have a chance, uh, do pick it up. They are hard to find but if you get lucky just like I did, uh, then you guys get to um, own this knife and really appreciate it for the amazing design that it is. So great job Protec. Love the Malibu. Thanks and stay ready.